So throughout this Profiting From Your Pinterest marketing series, I walked you guys um, through everything that I use in my strategy and through what Pinterest is and how to use it and how to automate it and all those things. Um, but I have noticed that some people who are already using Pinterest or some people who may have tried it, um, they're saying that they have said that it may be either not working for them or it stopped working. So I've had a similar experience with like engagement and interaction dropping on Pinterest. So I wanted to discuss with you some of the reasons why and some of the things that you can do to change that. And if you are still like um, on the fence or haven't for, for whatever reason tried Pinterest yet, um, this can still be helpful for you for you to learn these things um, so that if you come across any of this when you do get started, um, then you can put this into your strategy. You can make those adjustments and um, you won't just panic about, okay, why isn't it working for me or why has my um, engagement or my results dropped? So I'm going to discuss with you today 10 reasons why your Pinterest um, marketing is it bringing you any sales traffic so number one is very simple and is if you're not using Pinterest or if you're just not using it um, to its full potential or maximizing it so um, if for whatever reason you aren't convinced that Pinterest is the platform for you or you're just procrastinating or whatever it is that's holding you back then that would be a good reason why it's not bringing you any sales traffic because you need to get started with it and um because you need you, because you need to get started with it and you need to take um the information that i've broken down on um, with you over this series and um just start the steps and if you're not using it correctly or using it to its full you know maximization then you need to start doing that so if you're not pinning enough um, or if you're not um, using the right titles and descriptions to get that um, information in front of people, um, if you're not, if you're trying to do all of this yourself and not using the schedule, those are some of the things that would mean that you're actually not using Pinterest because you're not using it the right way as um, I've laid out in all these strategies. Number two would be that you're not up to date on the current practices, the current best practices. So you know that as with all social media platforms, they have their certain, um, they have their certain rules or they have their certain changes that they make. Sometimes it's yearly, sometimes it's out of the blue. They want to test things out and see how this is going to work and see how people are going to react to it. And Pinterest is no exception. So they have rules in place from the beginning to prevent people from being scammed and spammed and, you know, all these games people try to play out there. They have rules to protect people from that. And they also make updates. And one of their most recent updates is that they um, prioritize fresh pins and fresh content. So if you experience some um decrease in your engagement and not look at the vanity numbers because some of those numbers don't really mean anything we're focused on clicks and saves and as a priority of that we're focused on clicks because that's going to get them to your landing page right so if you've experienced some decreases in that and you're not aware of these new rules then you need to check on that and and make sure that you're applying that like even on old content, looping or repinning that same content, it doesn't work the same. And also repinning other people's content, it doesn't work the same as it used to. So the focus now is on your own content and pinning new pins for that content and updating that old content to um, make sure that it's fresh by their standards so that they can prioritize that and put that in front of the right users over recycling old stuff over and over again. So all of those 
best practices that you need to be up to date with. Um, you know, make sure that you're up to date with that before you just throw Pinterest, you know, throw the whole Pinterest away. So, number four is, oh, no, no, number three. <laughs> number three is that you're trying to manually pin everything. So, um, unless Pinterest, mark, your Pinterest marketing is all that you have to do all day, then it's going to be near impossible to manually pin everything. Even if you drop down like some people to only pinning five or six pins per day, you still need to keep up with the best time to pin those for your audience. And that's going to mean like setting your alarm, setting something on your calendar and making sure that you're not in the middle of a meeting or a call or taking care of your child or cooking dinner or cleaning up when that alarm goes off. So um, manually pinning, it's, it's okay to manually pin some things, but manually, trying to manually pin all your pins on a daily basis, which is, you know, you should be pinning or showing up daily, then that's not gonna work. So you're going to need to use a scheduler. My schedule of choice is um, Tailwind. They have others out there. Buffer has one, and I'm a fan of Buffer. And other platforms have Pinterest on there, but none of them, to, in my opinion, none of them compare to Tailwind and what Tailwind brings to the table for your Pinterest marketing. So um, if you go back a couple of episodes, I'll walk you through the different components of Tailwind. If, you go, if you're watching from video and you go back, a couple, I walk you through the different components of Tailwind, and I also have an audio podcast. I'll drop a link to that that um, walks you through, you know, how to use Pinterest to automate your pinning and to, you know, to build, bring traffic to your website. So don't, you know, that may be why you're not getting the results you're looking for because you're not using the best times and you're not pinning at the best times for your audience. Number four. Um, is your pins are ugly and yeah I said it your pins your pins are ugly and that may be a reason why you're not getting the results you're looking for and you're not getting sales traffic to your website people <clears throat> your pins are the first impression um, that you're going to give everybody the users on Pinterest that's the one that's one of the first things they're gonna see they're gonna see your pin they're gonna see the quality of it and they're gonna see the headline um, or the title on the, the text, the, the description on your pins. So you want to make sure that all of these are on point. So make sure that your graphics are um, high quality, nothing pixelated. Make sure that you're, you're using, of course, like colors that correlate with your branding, but also, you know, if you've done your research about your branding, there, there are things that are appealing to the users or to your audience and not just your favorite color. Um, so you want to make sure that you are taking into account all of the things, the big bowl headers or the contrasting text and all of the things that um, will make that pin attractive and also a compelling this you know a compelling title or headline on those pins so you almost want to lay it out like a magazine cover or a book cover and I've said this before and also um you know there is I have um and a video dedicated to showing you like the layout of how your pins supposed to look I give you examples of this and I also show you in Canva how to design this pin to to you know appeal to the users and to your audience so that's going to be a huge part of it like to make sure that you know you don't your pin isn't skipped over and that people actually stop scrolling and take a look at it and to look more into it then you need to make it attractive and not ugly um and also another thing if you're not like a designer or you're not techie like that or you just don't have the time to devote to it you can hire either a Pinterest manager or you can get templates that are already done for you um, I have some of those templates I can drop a link to those but they're basically already 
um, laid out the way that you should have your pen arranged, like an attractive, beautiful pen. And all you have to do is adjust the, you know, change the text or um, it's easy to kind of adjust the colors to whatever colors you need them to be. And then you just start pinning. It's a variety of them. So you can change them up to be fresh pins. You can change the images on the back. And that's a lot easier from, than trying to start from scratch is to use the template. So um, those are some options for you if you're not, um, if you don't want to do the design yourself or if you're not able to do the design yourself. Number five, you're not using Pinterest SEO in your titles and descriptions. Now, that's, that comes second. Um, well, actually, they're both kind of equally important. In the feed, they're going to see your pen and how beautiful and gorgeous your pen is and, you know, the, how the pen wows them. But if they're searching for something, which a lot of people come to Pinterest to search for information, for inspiration, um, for ideas, for products and services, they come searching for that. So... Um, that's why you want to make sure that what they're searching for based on whatever topic you have, that you've done your research, that you've looked up what people are searching for, and that you've included that as a part of your title and as a part of your description. So you want to make this, you want to do, um, you know, the perfect combination of copy and SEO. You want to make it attractive and you want to make it compelling. So basically, you know, you want to make it, um, you want to make it something that causes them to want to click and learn more, but also that includes these search terms of how to do this or where to find this or whatever it is that the problem is that they're trying to solve. So, um, you start by looking at a, looking in a search engine to see what people are searching for. So, um, I discussed this um, in more detail in previous episodes too. So if you haven't checked out the profiting from your Pinterest marketing series um, from my um, Dreamers and podcast, then check that out and also the videos that you'll find on YouTube. Um, number six, your content isn't helping your audience. So that's another thing similar to what, what I just discussed. Like you, a lot of people are passionate about different things. And of course you want to be passionate and you want to be capable or gifted at doing um, what it is that you, um, you know, gifted at what it is that you're in business or what it is that you're blogging about the content, what, whatever your website is about. You want to be passionate about it and you want to be gifted about it. But at the end of the day, um, what you're, you know, the problem that you're solving and the information that you're providing, the value that you're giving, is not about you. And it's not about what you want to talk about. It's about satisfying your user or satisfying your market, your audience. So what they're looking for and what they want to talk about and what, um, you know, what they're trying to find, that is your focus. So if your content isn't helping your audience, you may want to look at, okay, did I do this for me or did I do this for them? And did I do my research on what they need to know and what they're looking for? And at the same time, you want to look at the quality of the content that you're putting out there. So you want to look at, okay, did I do, did I give them what I said I was going to give them? Did I do what I said I was going to do? Or did I just give them um, an extravagant, title and description and my content didn't deliver or over deliver what I said that I was going to do. So you want to look at that and make sure that you're thorough, thorough in the content that you put out there. Number seven, you don't know your target audience. You don't know who your target audience or your target market is. This is like extremely important to make sure that you're talking to and you're putting your information, your pins, your content in front of the right people. And it's just, it's just important and it's a core component of like the foundation of your business. So if you, you know, if you did a business plan, then that's a part of, a part of your business plan, your business plan and your marketing plan. 
is to know your target audience. Because if you don't know who you're talking to, then, you know, chances are you're not talking to anybody. Or if you do like a lot of people and you say, um, well, I'm, I want to target everybody. I want all the money. Well, you're probably getting none of the money. So um, you need to know like who your target audience is. I know that mine are women. I know that mine are between the ages of um, 25 and 45. I know that mine are people who either are trying to, you know, learn the beginning phases of business or people who don't have time to do certain business tasks and so they're trying to make it easier or they're trying to learn how to delegate that to somebody else so um and it goes even deeper into their income levels the type of um things that they enjoy the tv shows that they watch the hobbies they have where they hang out you may need to spend some time doing your homework on that and finding out you know, who, who are these people and what do they do and where can I find them? And based on that, you can begin to do the research on what they like and what they want and what they're looking for and how you can help them with that. And so it may have to begin with there. It, it may not be nothing wrong with your pins and your content, but you're not targeting it to the right people. You're not putting it in front of the right people and you don't know what they want because you don't know who they are. So spend some time finding out who your audience is and who your target market is. Number eight, you are unclear about what your objective is. And that's another thing that is a part of the planning process. It may not be a part of your business planning process, but it'll be a part of the process later on. It's like when you're setting up an ad or a certain promotion or when you're setting up anything new, like, um even when you're writing this content what do you want when you're when you're scheduling a pin any of that you need to think about what you want what is the result that you want to get from this what do you want them to do are you trying to get them to um read your blog um and give you feedback on it make a comment are you trying to um make an immediate sale send them to your shop or you know get them to purchase something from an affiliate or are you trying to do something more long term like get them on your email list and then build that relationship and then transfer that into a sale so you need to know specifically and clearly communicate like what you want the end result of this to be are you trying to get them to schedule a consultation like what is it what is your objective because you kind of have to work your way back backwards and think about okay this is the objective and so this is how i'm going to get them there and then from there you'll know you know you know what pinning what content strategies and what pinning strategies that you need to use to get to that objective so you need to be clear with yourself first what the objective is and write that down and plan it out and then from there you'll be able to be clear with your audience number nine you don't have a clear call to action and so this piggyback off of the previous one if you have if you're clear with that objective then is is then that you'll be able to be clear with your audience and so um once you're writing your content then you can kind of you know plant the seed and kind of lead them or segue that them into that call to action because you have you know exactly what your objective is so you can give them a call to action and you can also like if you're clear on what your call to action is then that's going to help you with figuring out the best title and the best descriptions to use for your pins um, and for, you know, when you're scheduling your pins, what you want to place on those pins, the titles and descriptions, because all of that is planning the seed and leading to that call to action. And lastly, number 10, you're not using Pinterest ads. Now, the reason number 10 is about the Pinterest ads is because you want to make sure that you're doing all of those things first. And you want to make sure that you are maximizing 
the organic activity that you're doing, the activity that's going to lead to the organic traffic. And you will, you know, be rewarded with a lot of it if you do these things right. Even though it's a long-term strategy, it will happen for you. But once you are, um, once you're maximizing all of your organic activity, then, you know, that's the time that you want to start um, investing into ads. Like we all have to put an investment into our business with time, money, um, or both. And, you know, once you put in the time, it's time to start investing into those Pinterest ads, especially if you have like specific product or services that you want to promote. You've gotten traffic to your website and more than likely if you set planning PCs and set things up right, they visited your shop or they visited your work with me page and seen or your services page and they've seen these things but you know who who um actually most of the time is gonna make a purchase their first time on their first encounter with you or your website unless they're just you know hot and hot and ready to buy and that doesn't mean they're necessarily ready to buy from you but you can take this information um, and see where they visited, um, you know, if you have your analytics or your um, tag set up, your Pinterest tag set up, you can take this information and you'll know exactly where they visited on your website. And from there, you'll be able to use that to promote to these people because these are warm people. You know, they've been on your site, they've seen your information, they've visited your shops and you can promote to those people and, you know, that's where you'll start to begin to get sales traffic and make those sales. So, um, you know, don't just take, don't just ex rely on all the organic traffic, because like I said, you'll have to, they'll have to get acquainted with you. They'll have to know you, they'll like you and trust you. Like, you know, when you're putting out your money, um, you want to make sure that you're getting what you're going to pay for. So, um, like once you went down the list and done everything on the list, then that would be the point that you start plugging in the ads and putting your, making sure that you're putting your information in front of people who have already gotten acquainted with you and who have um, warmed up, you know, warmed up to you and your content and what your business has to offer. So all of this and being consistent with all of this it will turn things around if you haven't experienced the traffic and the sales that you're looking for from using Pinterest marketing. So um, review these, let it marinate, um, let me know what you think about it, or if you have any questions about it, um, you can pop those in the comments from wherever you're watching, whether it's YouTube um, or whether, it, whether you're listening um, from my website. And if you're listening from Anchor, just press that record button and ask your question and I will surely get back to you. Um, and if you haven't grabbed, as I said earlier, if you haven't grabbed those um, Pinterest pin templates, the design templates, you can go to daniellatowner.com slash shop and get your hands on those. Thank you guys for listening, and as I always say, dream until your dreams come true.